So let's start with the next set of queries. And in this video, I will be talking about the group Y clause. It's very important concept. So let's get in. Let's create a new worksheet for that. I don't want to just keep creating everything in this worksheet. And that's how you organize your worksheets also. So let's go to this worksheets and you can actually rename your old worksheets here. So let me quickly rename. And then also I'll create a new worksheet as group by distinct examples. I want to copy a couple of my queries from from here. So if you remember, we already look kind of group clauses where it's running our queries on a whole set of group versus few rows or versus separate rows. So it, it, these count and some function was on the group of rows. And in this case, our group was the whole group, the whole table. And that's how it returned our data. This was like this much when we sum this. So that was one example of, of a group function. But really the group by is little different. So let's let's check on that. First look at, let's look at this order data and let's see what, what we are trying to do here. So when you want to look at the data, just to select star and then maybe you want to just check, you, know, you want to just check maybe 10, 20 rows. So this is our data. This is orders data. What I really want, there is an order priority. There is a medium, high, urgent. I wanted to see in each and every priority how many total orders I have or how many total rows I have separated by each order priority. Okay. So so let's check that how to write the query so i already wrote this query so now look at that so you say select and you check the order priority and say count star from the table and then you also say group by that so whenever you write group by whatever number of fields you give you have to put them in the select clause also that's the rule so now what it is doing is it's grouping by on this so it will create the group of medium a group of high and then it will tell me how many rows in that group and i'm also ordering by i'm also ordering by so let's say for now i won't order by so i will comment that this hyphen hyphen is how you comment so let's run the query now if you see here is my group and and let's make it a little bigger so in my group i have this many rows now i wanted to order by so that i can see you know one two three sometimes my list is huge i can actually order by like that i can also do it but when you want to do programmatically, then you wanted to give order by. So let's say order by. And if you don't give ascending or descending, so you can write ascending or you want to write descending, then it will order your data by that. By default, it's ascending. So let's leave it at ascending. So here is one, two, four, five, and you can see the number of rows in each group. So urgent orders are around 300,000, low orders are around, around 300,000. So this data is very evenly grouped. Also, I wanted to introduce, let's say if you want to do descending, right? You can quickly check descending. And here is the result of with descending. So you did it ordered by descending. Also, sometimes before you run order by, you want to see what are the distinct values for this field, right? You This is these order priority. We only have only five distinct values in this. So you can sometimes do your data analysis like that. That's how when you write SQL queries, you are actually looking at the data. You're trying to do some data analysis for your development purpose or for debugging or for many different reasons because people wanted some data and you are looking at data just by writing these different queries. So that's how you can use distinct clause to, to give you data back. Now, keep in mind, like you may not do distinct on a customer key or account number because that will you know what would you look at because this is the values will be so many you know we have seen one one table with 65 million rows so you will have 65 million unique ids let's say customer id or account id so usually you do these distinct on uh, on those fields uh, which have less unique values you know it's 100 500 500 or maybe 20 or 10 so that you can actually look at the data and you can analyze the data. And that is also related to high cardinality versus low cardinality. Like this field, O order priorities is low cardinality because 
the number of unique values are less. Now, if you look at that example where customer ID or account ID, we will consider that field or that column as with high cardinality because the number of unique values will be a lot. So usually you would do this kind of analysis with low cardinality fields. Let's check one more concept with group by. Let's say my business manager doesn't want to see not specified and low orders and he or she wants to see only urgent high or medium priority orders so that they can look at them and try to quickly fulfill them so that they can increase the revenue quickly so for that you will say where and you can just copy paste the same column and you say where or order priority not in and you do your bracket and you can copy paste this as a good practice try to copy paste versus write because then chances of manual errors will be less so this is how you write not in so not in meaning i don't want these two groups in this case so let's run this and you will see it will give you only these three orders so not in now if the reverse of that is in so let's say the manager say hey i just want to see how many low orders we have and what is the count for that so let's run this query and it will only give you these two so this is a concept of where clause along with group where you want to filter some data and you want to group rest of the data also related to group by function filtering is the having clause so let's quickly check that also let me remove my where clause for now so having is kind of a where clause but with the group but with the group data so if i say having count star greater than 300000 so pay attention what i'm saying that i only want those group orders where my count is greater than 300000 meaning i'm kind of filtering out this medium because my count is less than 300,000, so it won't give us that. So having is like a filter on top of the group data. Now, if you just write where clause with count, that won't work because where needs a column name, a column which is inside the table, but the count is a function which is a group function which you have calculated here and now you're kind of using that as a where clause in having so that's how when you are trying to do a filter based on a group function like account then you use having and not where so now if i run this it will not give me medium because that has count less than 300,000. So now if you see, I have all my orders which where the count is greater than 300,000. So this is the concept of having, it's very useful and you will learn that eventually how you use having to find out duplicates. So sometimes you will say having count star is greater than one, meaning there are more than one combination, especially for your primary keys and you can figure out whether there are duplicates based on your unique key or a primary key. But we will learn that in future also. So in this video, we covered this thing group by and the where clause with the group by. I hope this video will help. And in my next video, I'll be talking about the join concept. How do you join two different tables? Let's say this table with some other table, you know, let's, let's say customer table, or we wanna join maybe two or three more tables. So how do we join them? What are the rules of joins? Because that is a very important concept and people do a lot of mistakes with that. So we will thoroughly understand that concept. Thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye now.